I believe that this particular topic is a very important topic because here's the reality. If you, you could be the best at running illustrations. You can be the best at understanding the behind the scenes of how these products work. You really can. But if you can't get a meeting started or scheduled, you're stuck. You're stuck, right? It, it's kind of like a game of dominoes, right? You, you, you need, you're good at all of these dominoes over here, but you can't get this one to tip over. And if you can't get this one to tip over, nothing begins. Everything else just kind of stays there. Um, let me see here. Caleb says at some point, 8424 as an advanced meeting. Yes, I agree with that. I think that should be something that we first talk about the VPs and then let the VPs kind of cherry pick which people they want to make sure from their meetings attend. So make sure we address that this coming Monday. Okay, not a problem. All right, so let's talk objections. Okay, we're going to talk about objections and conversation engagement so that you can bring about your industry to people that you're, you know, talking to in, in a social setting to try to get the interest. Okay. Objections. Here's what I want you guys to do. I'm going to start listing off. I'm going to start going, but I want you to type in the chat box what objections you guys are getting that you can't seem to overcome. Okay. Um, something I have to say about objections is this. If you avoid objections, this business won't work for you. If you're waiting to only help people that you call that tell you, yes, I am looking for insurance. Can you please meet me tomorrow? I have my checkbook and my credit card with me. You will be out of business. I've probably had that scenario happen to me once every seven years type scenario, like where someone actually calls me and wants it or doesn't call me and I call them and they're like, yes, thank goodness you called me. It doesn't work that way. Most people, most people will give objections unlike any other. Can you send me the break? Can you send me to the breakout room? I just got the message to go into the room. Yes, Mary Smith. I got you, Mary. Where are you, Mary, 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 Mary? Quite contrary. I don't know why people have said that to her. She's probably like, not you too. Where are you, Mary? Mary, I can't seem to find you. Hang on one second. I see you there, but I don't see you as someone I can send to the breakout room. Sonia, Sheila, ta -ta 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 -ta. In the room. There you are, Mary. Okay, Mary, I'm sending you over there. Okay, good, cool. All right. So uh, Maria says, I need to discuss this. Uh, what do we got here? I need to discuss this with my son or daughter. That's a good one. That's a very good one. Okay. So um, if you don't master objections, you're going to lose out in this business. People will naturally always give you an objection, no matter what, guys. It's their norm. Their safe zone is to say no, especially someone that they don't know. Their safe zone is always to say no. A referral may give you less objections than a lead because with a referral, you get to introduce where you got their name from. Simple as that. A lead doesn't know who the heck you are. A lead might be annoyed that there's seven other people that, that have called them already. Your job is to be different than all the other seven. Most people make this mistake when the client says one objection, they're like, okay, thanks, no problem. That's not the way you run this business. You have to know what, how to overcome it, how to overcome it, how to overcome it, how to overcome it. So here's what I typically do, right? Let's address the first one that Maria just said to me. I need to discuss this with my son or daughter. Is this in reference to scheduling the meeting, Maria? Uh, it's more in reference uh, after I've made the presentation. After you made the presentation, perfect. Yeah. So. One thing I always try to do with every objection is I try to use it to my advantage. I try to make it as though that's the area that I work, right? So when someone says to me, well, you know, I really need to discuss this with my son or daughter. My response to them is this. That's great. To be honest with you, I can honestly appreciate that because if I was talking, if someone was talking to my parents, I'd want them to make sure that they give me an opportunity to sit in and cross-examine. I said, and I go, now what I'd like to do is I'd like to actually schedule a meeting. Let's put something on the table that you think they're going to be available for and you're going to be available for. And here, let me explain to you why. If you discuss the information to your son or daughter, that information might get watered down. And I think the last thing you want to do is receive a question from them where all they say, where, where your only response is, I don't know. I said, so instead of playing the telephone game, why don't we schedule something? And it could be, it could be a phone call if need be, where I get to address some of the questions that they're going to have so that we can make sure that they're 
on the same page with what it is that you're thinking about doing. How does that sound? Right? So I use it to the advantage. I use it to the advantage. Now, if I'm making phone calls, what's the number one? What's, what, what, what do you think are the, are the top objections you get on the phone when you're trying to schedule meetings? What would you say they are? I mean, I know, I know some of them. I already have insurance. I already have insurance. That is notorious. Notorious. Okay. I already have insurance, right? Here's the answer. That's great. I want you to know that the department that I work in specializes in working with people who currently have insurance in place. My job is to see if I can help you save 20 to 30 to even 40% on your monthly premiums. Let me ask you a question. If I could help you reduce the amount of money you're paying towards your current insurance and still keep the same amount of insurance in place, would that be a benefit to you? Right? Think about that. It's almost like a loaded question. It's like, who says no to that? Who says, I mean, who says no to that right now? You know, it, it's that kind of environment. That's my objection. Another thing you want to know about objections is you always end it with a closing question and the closing question needs to work in your favor, number one, and needs to be guided towards scheduling the meeting. So when, when I asked that question, right, you know, would, you know, would, uh, would you benefit from saving 20 to 30, 40% on your monthly premiums? Yes, I would. Awesome. I'm looking at my calendar and I'm seeing myself, I'm seeing here that I'm available and I'm in your area on Tuesday in the afternoon time. What works best for you, two o'clock or five o'clock, right? I'm always leaning into the appointment, leaning into the appointment. But if you, if you overcome the objection and then don't have a follow-up question, you overcome the objection, you know what they're gonna say? Oh, okay. And then you got that awkward silence. It always needs to go back to the close, back to the close. Everything in business is getting, everything in sales is getting from this step to this step. You're not trying to get from this step to the sale. You're trying to get from this step to this step, this step to this step, this step to this step. Closing business is just a bunch of mini closes all at once. It's just a combination of mini closes. So in the phone, me closing business means getting them to commit to an appointment, right? In the first meeting, me closing business is them commit is, is getting them to answer questions about their insurance or retirement needs and finding a gap. Right. In, in, in the first meeting, if I find a gap, my, my objective is to get them to give me a, a commitment and a, and a date for a follow up. If I'm working final expense, my goal in my first meeting is to get them to apply. But it's always first step, second step. Your first step in the phone call is getting the appointment. That's your first step. I need to get the appointment. So I got to overcome the objections and just get to the appointment piece, right? So hopefully that helped. That's, that's the objection. What other objections do you get when you're calling leads? I have insurance with my uh, employer. Okay. <clears throat> so, so let me give you the employer objection. Mr. Klein, let me ask you a question. That, number one, that's great. I work with people who... who who have insurance with their employer. So you're definitely talking to the right person and I'm definitely talking to the right person, right? Mr. Klein, let me ask you a question. One of three things will probably happen in your relationship with your employer. You're either gonna retire, you're gonna quit, or they're gonna let you go. But one of these three is gonna happen at some point in your life with your employer, unless you're planning to work there for the rest of your life. Am I correct, Mr. Klein? Yes, you're correct. Now, I want you to understand my department works with people that understand that when one of these three things happen, they're no longer going to have insurance in place. And so what I do is I work in the private sector and I make sure that whatever it is you have now will be with you when you retire. And the price is based on your age today, not your age tomorrow or your health tomorrow. So if it's important for you to make sure you have insurance in place when you retire, if it's important for you to make sure you leave a legacy in place when you retire, the reason for my call is to make sure we can cover that need. And now I'm looking at my calendar and I see myself available on Thursday. And I was just curious what works best for you, mornings or afternoon? You notice I didn't ask them for permission. This was an assumptive close. Like I overcame the objection. You agreed. I'm going in for the assumptive close. Does that make sense, Irv? Mm -hmm. Good. What other questions? What other objections do you guys get when you're calling leads? Come on now. I already have coverage, right? What about the, what about the, I didn't, I never filled this out. I never requested information. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> like, yep, that, that happens a lot, right? 
I never requested this information. Oh, Mr. Klein, I'm so sorry to hear about that. What we find from time to time is that the people who requested this information on your behalf are probably your loved ones and they just used your contact information. Okay, now I, I do want you to know your particular territory qualifies you for some state approved programs on discount and a free state legal packet that includes a medical care directive, a power of attorney, and a last will and testament at no cost to you. Let me ask you a question, Mr. Klein. What changed your interest in needing coverage? Right? So you leverage, someone else might've filled out this information for you. That's what I typically leverage. Oh, Mr. Klein, I'm so sorry about that. What we've learned is that a lot of times our very own clients, you know, families are the ones that fill out this information and, and requested that we give you a buzz. I want you to know something that, you know, I see here that the territory that you live in is in, is in Naples, Florida, correct? That is correct. Okay, I have your address as 123 Palm Avenue. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Your particular area, just so that you know, qualifies for a state approved funeral expense program. It also qualifies you for a free state approved legal packet that includes a medical care directive, a power of attorney, and a, and a, and a last will and testament. You can use that for any of your existing insurances or any other insurances in the future, plus your assets as well. Now, I, now I'm going to be in your area again. I'm going to be in your area on Palm Avenue tomorrow in the morning and in the afternoon. Is there a time that you prefer for us to sit down and connect? Assumptive close going in for the appointment. Assumptive close going in for the appointment. What other objections do you guys think you get? Come on now. Boom, 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 boom. Hey, some people ask to take them out of the list. No, no yeah. problem. Take me out of your list, right? That happens. So what's the objection to hand them to that? Mr. Klein, I'm so sorry that you're requesting for us to get out of the list. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to speak to my marketing department. I'm going to make sure that you're no longer on this list. However, I cannot guarantee that other marketing companies didn't receive your information and they may very well be calling you. If I might ask, what caused you to change your mind about your interest with insurance? And then they're going to give you another objection. You got to get ready for that one. That next one might be, I already bought insurance. Oh, that's great. I want you to know I specialize in working with people who currently already have insurance. My job is to help you save 20 to 30%. Would a 20 to 30% discount on your current premium benefit you? Or they might give you the objection, yeah, I'm not interested. Oh, I totally understand. A lot of the times our clients, family members are the ones that put in your, put in your information and requested for us to reach out to you because there might be a program that your particular territory qualifies for where you get some discounts and some free, you get what I'm saying? I'm always pivoting, boom, 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 and then calendar, and then calendar. Any other objections? I can't afford it. Can't afford it. Gotcha. Mr. Client, if you don't mind, I haven't actually had a chance to run you some quotes right now. There's actually some programs from a health insurance standpoint that could very well be absolutely free. And there's some very cost effective, cost effective insurance policies in place. If you don't mind me asking, when you say you can't afford it, what dollar amount can you afford? Right? That's the way that I'm typically working. I have an agent I'm already working with is what Juan said, right? Perfect. <laughs> I like that one, actually, because I treat that as a recruiting opportunity as well, by the way. I have an agent I'm already working with. That's awesome. Is it someone from our department or from our office? What's his name? Right? Oh, his name is Steve. And Steve, did he give you a business card? He did. What company? Right? And if you know about the companies, you know what the leaks are, right? Oh, my agent, Steve, he's from Primerica. <sighs> Come on now. I'm not even going to get into that one. I think everybody knows how to overcome that objection, right? Oh, he's from WFG. You know how to overcome it. You get what I'm saying? You know you know how to over overcome it, right? And, and, and if they don't know, I don't remember. His name is John, but I don't really remember. Listen, I'm calling from the quality control department. I just want to make sure that the services that they're providing you are at par. Have they talked to you about the discounted benefits that you qualify for? other than the insurance? What I'm talking about are these member benefits called orphan benefits. No, I'm sorry, not orphan benefits. Um, these, these benefits that I'm talking about, you know, are the, the legal links services where you can get, you know, free legal aid services for your last will and testament. I'm talking about the grant programs that are available to the community, or I'm talking about the, the scholar. You get what I'm saying? You, what am I listing off, by the way? What, what benefits am I listing off? Foresters. 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 There you Foresters. go. You know what they're going to say? No, he only talked to me about life insurance. Really? You know what company it was with? 
Oh yeah, it was a company by the name of blah, blah, blah insurance agency, right? Or insurance company. Oh, well, listen, I just want you to know we're currently working right now with a company that's offering benefits simply by having insurance protection with them at a very, a very competitive cost, probably the same cost that you're already paying, or if not less, you're going to get these additional benefits in place that you might be able to leverage, like a legal link services where you can talk to an attorney and they can put together a free will investment for you, right? Or a grant program, you know, or a, a foundation program where you can actually have them leave a certain percentage of their money to a charity of your choice at zero cost, right? Or a scholarship program for your grandkids. All of these benefits are automatically included with the purchase of the insurance program that we have to offer. Mr. Client, do you know how much insurance they quoted you for? Oh, they quoted me for 10,000. And how much were you paying for that? $75. Do you mind if I run a quick quote to see if there might be something more cost effective for you? Are you a smoker? Yes. No, I'm not. And I have here, your date of birth is January 7th, 1957. Is that correct? Yes, it is. What am I doing? I'm going into the mobile quick quotes link. I'm running the quote real quick for a plan right program. I'm running it at what dollar amount do you need to have it at to get these member benefits? 10,000. 10,000. We know that, right? We know that because we just went through closures college on that piece. So I'm going to run it at 10,000, run them a quote. Let's say they're getting a quote for 7,000. I'm going to run a $7,000 quote as well, because maybe the plan rights program is already cheaper at 7,000. So they'll do it just for the cost effectiveness behind doing business with us, or they might get the 10,000 because they want all those member benefits. You get what I'm saying? Boom, 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 boom. Something that you guys should know that we're about to do. I'm going to add it in right now, actually, to the mobile quick post. Not myself. It probably won't be tomorrow. I'm going to add a link that you can copy and paste and text message to your client that'll have the member benefits for forcers already there. So you'll be able to be like, hey, is this your number? Yes, it is. Boom, I just sent you a link. Did you get it? Yes, I did. Open it up. There's all the member benefits. These are the benefits that you qualify for by doing business with one of our TKO agents or one of our TOC agents or one of our, you know, whichever agency you're a part of. Hey, right? Now you're thinking outside the box. You know what everybody here should do? Everybody here should do this. Google Docs is phenomenal. I would put together a one page personal and business resume, a personal and business resume, something that has your picture, you know, a little personal bio on you, maybe another picture of you and your kids, a little bit of a business bio for you, your contact information, boom, 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 right on a one page Google doc. And then what you do is you create a share link a view only share link and you keep that link on your phone. And whenever you're talking to people, oh, da, 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 let me send you a link. Boom. This is, has my, this has my information, a little bit about myself, a little bit about, it's got a picture of my business card, my contact info, a little bio on who I am professionally and personally. You know, that little extra touch. I'm telling you right now, the baby boomers, the baby boomer generation, the millennial generation, the Gen Z, the Gen, and not the Gen Z, I'm not going to say the Gen X generation, all that, that gener they appreciate that kind of stuff. They appreciate that kind of stuff. And, and it's free. It's absolutely free. Now, if you want to take that to a whole nother level, you get your own website. Like Lucia Maldonado, I got to give her credit. She got her own website. She paid 250 bucks to get her own website set up. It's Lucy Vega. It's LucyVegaFinance.com. I don't even think it's live yet, but it's similar to mine, Tony Martinez Finance. Take a look at mine, TonyMartinezFinance.com. Take a look at it. You would have the same exact website created, except it would have your bio, your pictures, your links, you're everything for what, 250 one time? Like, hello, I do that all the time and sending that to people. Any other objections? What else we got? Okay, let me say a couple things then here, okay? Um, Cause then I'm gonna get into engagement conversation with Tani for, for Tanisha's Q, uh, question that she had. Let me say a couple things here for those of you that are leveraging a CRM system like Jarvis for leads. You're going to give the client options and how to communicate with you. Okay. Um, let's say they say to you text message. Cool. Ask a couple questions on text message. Let's say they say to you email. Let me start with text message. They say text me. Okay, cool. Not a problem. Mr. Client, um, do you know how much coverage it is that you're looking for? And I have your, you know, let them answer that. I have your current date of birth as dot, dot, dot. Is that correct? Boom. Yes, it is. I have your current address as dot, dot, dot. Is that correct? Boom. I love to verify address and dates of birth right away 
Because if I don't successfully get to land an appointment on the phone, what do I have an opportunity to do? Go by. I got to say, hey, I already confirmed their address and I know their date of birth, which means I can, I know I can bring a quote with me or at least have an idea, but I have their address. I can drop by, drop by, right? Knock on their door. Okay. Bring a pie with you, you know, offer them some type of goodie for doing business. You, you guys might laugh and think, really? Yes. Put a business card, you know, tape it to the top of a pie and offer it. You have no idea. Maybe it's just me. I'm just, again, I'm from South Florida, the West Coast, right? The East Coast is a little different. East Coast, you know, Latino, you got to bring a cafecito with you with your business card. That's how you get them. But in the in the West Coast, like they're, they're kind of the Southern. They're from the, it's like really Southern, right? So that kind of Southern hospitality works. I don't know if it works where you're at, but it does for me. Um, but drop by. Drop by, definitely drop by. So why do I say this? When they say text message, ask them those questions. And then once you get the answers, call them. You're like, wait, Tony, but they didn't ask to be, te- they didn't ask to be called. I don't care. Call them. If they say, email me, you know what you're going to do? You're going to text them and say, not a problem, but I need to, an- I need you to answer a couple questions. So I know exactly what to send you via email, which I have your date of birth as dot, dot, dot. Is that correct? Yes. I have your address as dot, dot, dot. Is that correct? Yes. Are you a smoker, non-smoker, non-smoker? You know, do you know how much coverage it is you're looking for? I'm looking for 10,000 of coverage. Do you know, you know, who would be the beneficiary? It would be my wife. Does your wife currently have coverage in place to see if we can offer some type of a family discount? Yes, no, whatever. Tony, does, does, does there exist a family discount? No, there doesn't, but it starts conversations. It starts conversations. You find out if the person has insurance or doesn't have insurance. That's what it does for you, right? Like, Actually, let me ask, Caleb, do you know if there are final expense companies where if husband and wife pick up a policy, there's some type of a family discount? Do you know if that exists? I'm not aware on the final expense side. Okay. Okay. I know that there's insurance companies that offer a discount if one person buys two policies. I just, I've never seen a discount if two individual people purchase policies just because they're married. I'm not sure. Look at that. Doesn't Edna have something like that? There you go. I know I, I, I mentioned it because something, I, it might be Edna. I think you're right. I think Edna does. National all. Life Group, I think, has it on the term side. NL, NLG? Yeah. There you go. Okay. So the fact that it's there gives you the opportunity to talk about it. It doesn't mean that that's exactly what you're going to present. Like, look, I'm talking about member benefits. They might not buy a Forester's plan, but I do have it as part of my tool belt. Right? So just because someone says, text me, okay, I'm going to text message, then call. Just because someone says, email me, I'm going to text message, get some data, send the email, and then you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to call to make sure they got the email. Did you happen to get the email I sent you? No, no, I haven't looked at it yet, but I will later on. Oh, not a problem. Listen, out of curiosity, you're, you're in plantation, aren't you? You are. Out of coincidence, I'm actually going to be out that way tomorrow. I'm actually visiting some clients. I have a I have a legal packet. It's a state approved legal packet that includes a medical care directive and a power of attorney. I'm not, a, I'm not authorized to send it to you via email. Do you mind if I drop it by? I just need like 10, 15 minutes to go over it with you. Is that no cost to you? Sure. Boom. You get what I'm saying? So you want to transition from, you know, text message, email, phone call, phone call, appointment, face-to-face. That's boom, boom, boom. That's your process. That's it. You know, some people tell me, I'll give you 20 minutes. I've never in my life been in a meeting for 20 minutes. Not never. It's not even because of me. They asked me 25 minutes worth of questions alone. You got to add in the other 10 minutes of sitting down intro. Can I give you a glass of water? Kind of like this. So when someone says, oh, I can give you 20 minutes, take it. Sure. No problem. They'll give you more, especially if you're bringing value, especially if you're bringing value get right down to it. One thing I don't recommend people do with objection handling is don't diverse from the objection. I hate when agents do that, where the client gives you an objection and you just skip right over like they didn't even say it. Like, wait, what? No, address the objection directly and then go back in for the close. And the close is what? An appointment. Any other objections before I transition into engagement conversation? Okay. That's the first domino, guys. I don't care if you're buying leads. I don't care if they're warrant. I don't care if you have a warm market. It's the first domino. A lot of people do not make six figures because this right here scares them to death. And it scares them to death because they don't know how to handle the objections. You got to be able to spit out objections like like blind, like, like robotic, like boom. 
You know it so well. To them, it's the first time you've said it, but to you, it's the 100th time that you've said it because it just rolls out your tongue, rolls out your tongue. But if you're not going to get into the objection mastery game, leads won't work. You'll forever be scared of the, oh my God, what if they say no? No. On the contrary, I look for people to be like, all right, give me an objection because I'm ready. Give it to me. I'm ready. That's the world you want to be in. Okay. Now, let's talk engagement conversations for those of you networkers, right? That actually used to be my space. You know, um, today I had a, con a good conversation with a guy running, like I said, just under a $2 million operation. And um, I loved his conversation with me because it was perfectly on point to what I value and what I'm looking to create and do at a TKO. And I come from a world where there was no leads, there was no recruiting. So it's like, how do you, how do you get in front of people? How do you, how do you, who do you, who do you call? Do you call the yellow pages? Like, who do, what do you call? I had a goal every single month of a hundred referrals, 100 referrals. That's 25 a week, 25 a week. That's five a day. If I worked five days, that's five a day. If I work six days and it's 20, it's 30, right? It's not, you look at a number, oh my God, a hundred, just chop it up. Chop it up. A hundred is 25 a week. 25 a week is if you're working five full days, you're talking about five a day. Five referrals a day, five referrals a day, five referrals a day. If you're scheduling five appointments a day and you're keeping 60% of them, that's three opportunities you get to ask for referrals. And if everybody's giving you two referrals, that's six referrals a day. And just chop it up into pieces, right? So why do I say that? Um, I got a lot of referrals through conversation starters. I got a lot of referrals just through conversation starters because let's face it, my, me, I'll tell you about my family. I don't have a huge family. I don't. Like if I had Sandra's family, I'd be in business in the warm market for 17 years. She's got a freaking ginormous family. It's like 87 cousins and 32 aunts. It's like some crazy, crazy number. They could fill up five planes, right, babe? Five planes? Five planes? I'm not lying. You're my aunt. I'm like, which aunt? You know, the one in color. Well, really? There's like eight of them that live in the first floor. We're just talking about like, they, she got family, family, you know, like, wow. You know, you know, you know, like the family plans and like cell phone companies, cell phone companies would lose money on, on their family plan. They lose money, go broke. I can't, I can't support all of this. My family's not like that. I have a mom, a dad, a, I have a mom, a dad, a brother and a sister. Yes, I have aunts. Yes, I have uncles. I have that, but it's not like we're super close. We're not, you know, excuse my French, like shit hits the fan. My family's there, but once everything is good, they're gone. They're back in their lives. I'm not blaming them. I'm just saying that's our dynamic. So I don't have a big market. I couldn't put together a warm list and build up. Like, that didn't exist, right? So I had to learn how to market. I did. Conversation starters, you want to know what that was like? I'll tell you. I first had to have, I had to, had to map out, this is the structure side of me, I had to map out where was I going to have these conversations at? Because, you know, it's not like, oh, when we go out to dinner, well, wait a minute, we go out to dinner, like me and my significant other go out to dinner once every two weeks, right? Maybe once a week. That's not enough opportunity, right? When we go to a, a family gathering, those aren't enough opportunities. You have to create the opportunities first. You have to become the, you have to become a master at becoming a social butterfly, in your community, becoming the mayor of your community. That's the first thing you got to do if you want to master conversation starters. You know what I would do? I joined BNI groups. I joined Chamber of Commerce groups. Um, if there were private, un, you know, unpopular groups, I joined them. Because here's the reality. Everyone and their mother knows about Chamber of Commerce. And everybody that goes to Chamber of Commerce, all they're trying to do is give you their business card and promote their business. I leveraged, when I went to a Chamber of Commerce event, I wasn't interested in the people that were attending the Chamber of Commerce. I was interested in who they knew, but I had to first make them a friend. I had to first make those people a friend. Those people are already on their guard. People, you go to Chamber of Commerce events and it's like this, it's like, hang on a second, let me show you. I like analogies, I like giving you visuals. It's like they got their business card in their hand and they got a shield up in this one. And then I, let me give you this business card here. Take it, but I don't want yours. That's what they do. That's what it is to go to a chamber of commerce. All they give a damn about, excuse me, sorry. All they care about is promoting 
their business. They don't care about yours. So I learned that. And I decided it worked. I used it in my advantage. You know what I didn't do? I didn't prospect them for their business card. They gave it to me here, but I wasn't talking my business at all. I was not talking my business. You know what I was talking about? I was talking about my family. I was talking about what I like to do recreationally. I was talking about things that allowed me to build a friendship with them. Right? What do you do? You know, and it's not that they wouldn't ask me what I do. Right? They would say, oh, I run a, I run a, you know, I run a graphics design business. Cool. What do you do? Well, I work in the area of insurance and investments. Hey, listen, graphics design, where's that at? Oh, it's in Fort Myers. Fort Myers, like by the beach? No, 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 not by there, by here. Oh, there's a restaurant there. I love that restaurant. You ever gone to there? Yeah, I've gone there. I love that. Da, 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 da. You like that kind of food? Da, 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 da. Awesome. My, me and my girl, when we go, love it. You, you married? You know, and I start to build the friendship. I want them to like me, right? I already have their business card because they gave it to me. Perfect. I have a pen in my pocket. I want to learn about them. Tell me about your kids. Tell me about this. Not in a weird way. Like, you know, there's ways to do it, right? This isn't like, hi, how are you? Do you have three children? Because I have two, right? Like, no, 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 no. You got to, you know, it's a dance. It's a dance. It's a back and forth thing, right? Once you got their info, you move on to the next person. You do the same thing over again. And you know what I did? I would write on the business card what I learned about the guy. He likes to fish. He likes to go golfing. He likes this. He likes that. He's married, three kids, or he's divorced, blah, 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 right? And I try to find something that I relate with him on, but I've got a social relationship with him now. I'm not saying this to be arrogant because everybody has this skill set. Some of you just need to practice that craft even more. But one of my best marketing techniques is selling myself before I sell the company. One of the best marketing techniques One of the best secret weapons that I have is selling myself. You won't, I'm not, I'm not dead ass. Forget the company, forget TKO, forget the back office resources, forget the prudential name nationwide is, forget that. None of that matters if they don't buy me first. My lethal weapon, when I'm out in the field, they need to like me. If I can get them to like me, I can get them on my side. And if I can get you on my side, I'm going to make you a client. But they got, they got to like me first. That's how it is in life, period. Period. In everything in life. You want to, you join a sport, you want people to pass you the ball, get them to like you. Simple. You join, you, you relocate to a new community, you want that community to like you? You want that community to welcome you and get them to like you. Get them to like you. Get them to like you. I became such a networker. I became such a promoter of other people. That was the other thing I became. I I became a promoter of other people, not me. So many people spend their time talking about them, 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 them. There's very few people that go, yo, tell me about yourself, bro. What do you like to do? And what about this? And what about your family? Nobody does that nowadays. Nobody does that nowadays. Be a promoter of them. Feed them some business from time to time. That's how you get into the community. And then the community starts to pay you back. The community starts to, to feed you. You became the, you became someone that they can, that they like. That's my secret sauce. That's my weapon. My weapon, I get them to like me first before they even know what the heck it is I do. And if, if you're an introvert, that means you got to practice that. If you're an extrovert, that means you got to hold that back a little bit. Cause I've seen some extroverts. They're like, (laughs) you're like, why are you smiling and laughing? I didn't even say a joke. I don't mean that guy. I don't mean that. I don't mean that. It's a dance. You're going back and forth, back and forth. You know, I'd encourage you all to join Toastmasters. Toastmasters. If you guys know what Toastmasters are, it's where you give a toast. You give a, that's a great exercise to do. Join a Toastmasters group. You know what people will do for you if you're humble and you're willing to be a student? Because that's what I did. I came into a Toastmasters a long time ago. And I said, listen, guys, I, I'm young. I'm young. I'm trying to make it in this community. Okay. I have a young family at home. I, I, I'm here because I want to learn the art of talking to people and I'm dead nervous about it. You know what, that, you know what it is to come into a room like that, that kind of humility, you know what everybody did? You got it, bro. Don't worry about it. We got you. We'll support you. We'll coach you along the way. You know, just to talk to somebody and be like, Hey, can I ask you for a favor? I really want your opinion. Oof, that's fire. I really want your opinion. You, you know how they feel when they say, you value my opinion? 
You value my opinion? So Tanisha, this might catch you off guard, but everything I'm talking about right now has nothing to do with pitching my product, pitching my insurance, pitching retirement, pitching health insurance. Do you know why? I can't pitch any of that until I pitch myself first. I can't pitch none of that until they like me. And let's face it, what I have to sell is not even sexy enough to talk about. Like some of us will deal with a car salesman who's a, who's a jerk because we want the car. It's like, I got to swallow this guy for an hour. Okay, fine, I will because the car's worth it. Ain't nothing sexy about insurance. It, it's not. There's not. There's nothing attractive on the other side of that bridge to them. It's attractive when something happens and you're the one that challenged them to do something. But the beginning is you. I sell me. I become personable to them. I become likable to them. Once I get that in, now I have permission to talk business after. So if I go to these networking events, I'm going to get 10 business cards. That used to be my goal, 10, 10, 10. And in all 10 of them, I write notes about the person personally. I talked very little about me. You know what I did the next day? I call them and I look at their business card. And what do most people have in their business card? Their business address. I know where they work. So I look at it and be like, all right, these people here are in Naples. These people here in Estero. These people here in Bonita. I'm going to call us Naples first. Ring. Hey, John, what's up, buddy? It's Tony Martinez. We were talking yesterday about that big old fish. Yeah, you remember that, that, that misdemeanor that they gave me? Which, by the way, side note, I, I, I have a misdemeanor in my record for catching the wrong fish. I'm a criminal. <laughs> $1,000 fine, by the way, minor. That was the worst fish on the planet to catch. It's a long story, but I'll tell you. Anyways, I talk about, I remind them about what we talked about. And you know what I want? I want them to remember me. Oh, yeah. What's up, bro? What's going on, Tony? Bro, if they say my name, oh, I know I hit him. I know I made an impression. And then here's my pitch. Hey, listen, John, you know, I had such a great conversation with you. I didn't even get a chance to talk to you about what some of the stuff that I do professionally. And that was honestly, that was my original objective, which is just to kind of talk to you about what I do professionally. But it was such a great personal social conversation that I, I completely forgot about it. Uh, you're in Naples, right? Yes, I know that because I just saw it in your business card, right? I'm actually going to be out that way. I see here you're on commercial. I'm actually going to be out that way tomorrow. I've got some clients to meet for a little while, but I had a cancellation. I've got some open spots. You think I could pass by for 20 minutes? Yeah, you know what they're going to say, right? If they like you, what are they going to say? Yeah, bro, sure, buddy, come by. They like you. Sure, bud, come by. Cool. I got three o'clock open, five o'clock open. Oh, three o'clock works for me. Perfect. This is the uh, this is your business card said. Da, 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 da. Is that correct? Yep. Awesome. It's three o'clock. Listen, that's right after lunch. Let me ask you a question. Do you get a chance to leave work to eat? No, no, I don't. Bro, why don't I bring you a sandwich, man? I'm gonna be. I'm gonna. I mean, I'll stop by Subway. What do you want? Ham and cheese? Five dollars. Five dollar foot long? Sure. Cool. You think I'm playing? I'm not playing. I'm not playing. I promise you, I'm not playing. I promise you, I'm not playing. You know what a $5 foot long does for me in this business? I promise you I'm getting something if they say yes to food. You're going to bring me food? Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. It doesn't have to be expensive food. Let me bring you a sandwich. You want to know how I locked down Sandra? You ready? You want to know how I locked down Sandra? I drove from Naples to Miami and I brought her homemade guacamole during her lunch break. Set it. Done. I'm in. That was it. I'm in. <laughs> I brought her food for lunch. Now she's looking at me like, really? That's what you were trying to do? Hell yes, that's what I was trying to do. You need to like me. I'm going to feed your belly. It's two hours, by the way, from Naples to Miami. I was, that wasn't Naples to Fort Myers. It's a two-hour drive with homemade guacamole just to catch her for her lunch break, for an hour in her lunch break in our car. Because we couldn't go anywhere to eat it, so it was in my car we ate it. But guess what? I got a, I got another date after that. And the rest is history. Now she runs licensing. Yes! <laughs> Honestly, you're selling yourself. You and that's exactly... Sleep. Huh? You wanted a sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it. I'm, I'm being dead honest, guys. That's exactly how I did it. And that's how I do it with my clients as well. I want people to like me first before... I pitch business, you got to like me because everybody makes this mistake. Everybody makes this mistake and tries to pitch their product first. You know what? You know what? What happens when you pitch your product first? They look at you and they go, all you care about is yourself. You're looking at me like a price tag. 
Nobody wants to be sold. Nobody, not nobody in life wants to be sold. So don't pitch a product. Offer them something first. You're over here, I'm gonna pass by. Yo, listen, it's around three o'clock. Do you get out? Do you get the chance to eat? So, you know, some people will tell you, no, I got a chance to eat, no problem. That's okay, but you thought about them. It's the thought. It's the thought. Listen, Subways and Starbucks knew who the heck I was in every area of town. Something as simple as a cup of coffee goes such a long way. Such a long way. Such, you know, yeah, I, I was driving to Closers College and I was running a little bit behind and I think I had messaged Lucia. I don't remember who it was. I, I know I spoke to Minor, and I, it was one of them. Hey, listen, I'm here early. Do you want anything? You want a cup of coffee? That meant so much to me that they were willing to make that stop to bring me a little bit of just some coffee because they knew I was running behind. It matters. But I'm, I'm, I'm building this, the relationship first before I talk to business. Now, when I get to the office, I'm talking business. Hey, man, how you doing? Listen, here's your sub, bro. You know, here's your coffee, man. <laughs> I know what it's like, man. Life of an entrepreneur, bro. Totally get it, man. And if they're not entrepreneurs, I don't mention that. But obviously, here, man, here, enjoy it. Listen, I'm not going to take up much of your time, man. I just wanted to drop off my business card. I wanted to tell you a little bit about some of the work that I do. For more of a 50-foot bird's eye view, and if any of this stuff strikes of interest, man, I'd love to maybe sit down with you afterwards outside of work and have that conversation with you. And if not, at least you know what it is I do. And maybe one day if you stumble upon something, someone that needs my service, you'll think about me, Okay. Great, cool, bro. What is it that you do? Well, listen, I work in the area of insurance and investments. I specialize in income tax reduction strategies, business planning, and insurance management, right? Nobody likes to pay taxes, right? I help people grow their money tax-free where Uncle Sam can't step into it. I help people plan for their family and their legacy. You know, let me ask you a question. Have you ever worked with a wealth distribution advisor? What the heck is that? Well, a lot of people teach you how to grow your money. Not, not many people teach you how to distribute that money so you don't outlive your money. That's the kind of work that I do. I make sure when you retire, you stay retired. And I make sure when you're no longer here, your family's protected and you leave a legacy behind all while growing the money. Tax-free. Don't say that out loud. Legally, by the way, too. What are you, what are you, what, what are you talking about? Notice I'm using key words that are very, Appealing to the ears, appealing, appealing, appealing. I didn't talk. Are you index universal life? No, no, oh, that you know, that those words attract us because we're crazy, we're from the industry, right? Like that, that attracts us, that doesn't attract them. I specialize in making sure you don't got to pay Uncle Sam taxes. I specialize in making sure that when you retire, you stay retired. What am I talking about? When you retire, you stay retired. What product am I talking about? Anybody? An annuity. An annuity, but if I say annuities, they're like, Ugh, no, <laughs> yeah, no. Right? I specialize in making sure you leave a legacy behind for your family. What am I talking about? Hmm. Life insurance. But if I said, no, I work in the area of life insurance. Ugh. I'm good. Bye. Thanks for the sub. Close the door. <laughs> right? Block your number. <laughs> Lose my address. No. I leave them with that in their mouth. They, like, they taste it. Like, what? 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 Listen, I'd love to sit down with you outside of work one day with you and your wife, if you can, and we'll have a conversation about it. And I'll, I'll share with you some of the work that I do. And listen, because we have such a good conversation, I'll make sure that our, our sit down is free, zero, zero cost, no consultation fee. Fire. That's the stuff that I do. That's how I become, right? What was it you wanted to talk about? Engagement conversation. I find places to go where I can build the rapport and sell myself first. I don't try to prospect and solicit my services in that meeting. I just want to sell myself first, make sure I capture their information, make sure I, 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 I built enough of a relationship that I'll be remembered on a social level, maybe about my kids, maybe about their, their upbringing, schools we went to, sports that we like, something I got to correlate with them and I'm going to, link, I'm going to lean on that. I'm going to lean on it. Someone tells me they like motorcycles, man, I'm talking motorcycles because I like it. I'm not fake about who I am. But I try to relate to them. And you'd be amazed how many things you can relate to people about. You really would. You really would be amazed. Once I do that in the first meeting, second call, I, hey, man, listen, we had such a great conversation yesterday, man. I really enjoyed it. I got to tell you, man. But I didn't even get a chance to talk to you from a professional standpoint, some of the stuff that I do. I was looking at your business card here, bro. You're in Naples, Florida on, on Mercantile Avenue. Is that where you at? Yeah. 
coincidentally, man, I got some clients out that way. I'm going to be out there tomorrow and I got some open slots. I want to see if maybe I could stop in for 20 minutes to share with you some of the work I do. Sure, man, come by. Listen, I'm available at two o'clock and then again at three o'clock. What works best for you? Well, listen, two o'clock works. Cool. Hey, just out of curiosity, do you typically catch lunch or, or do you skip it? Because if you skip it, man, it's two o'clock. You'll be hungry, man. I'll bring you a sandwich if you want. Right? I mean, I got no problem. I, I, I'll bring five dollars sub. It don't matter. It's a foot long. It don't matter. Some people say, no, nah, man, it's OK. I'm good. Some people say, really? Sure, man. No problem. What do you want? Ham, cheese. What do you like? Don't bring me something you're allergic to. I ain't trying to have you sue me here. <laughs> Yeah, you see the smirk that came out of Miner's face? That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that little smirk, little, oh man, like you're building rapport, building rapport. I spent so much time building the rapport and selling this right here, me, that by the time I pitch the product, they like me so much, they can't say no. Listen to what I just said. I spent so much time building me. No one could be like me. You ever remember, like I'm, I'm re-watching, and I encourage everybody to watch this. I'm re-watching The Last Stand on Netflix, the Michael Jordan documentary, right? You remember that commercial, right? Everybody want to be like Mike, right? Mike. Nobody could be like Tony. <laughs> Nobody could be like Irvin. Nobody could be like Minor. Nobody could be like Maria Mata. Nobody could be like Caleb. So you're selling yourself first. That's the most precious item you have. Insurance is insurance. You sell yourself first. Once you've sold yourself first and they like you, <laughs> Game over. Now you talk business. And you can talk business almost in a casual way because they like who you are already. I'll tell you right now, if someone invites me to their house for dinner, I'm, I'm leaving with applications. I promise you, nobody invites someone to their home for dinner that they don't like. Nobody. Not nobody. So if they like you from the first engagement, you met them at a chamber event, you met them at a you know, whatever, you met them at a, um, a, a, a Toastmasters, you met them at a grand opening of a business and they happened to be serving wine. You met them at Blue Martini on a Friday night business, wine night, $5 wine. You met them at a two for one Chili's. I don't care where you met them. If they invite you to their house for dinner, you're, you're in, I promise you, you're coming out with applications. Now, when I say to you, I'm interested in who they know, it's because I'm going to make my attempt to gener generate them as a client the way that I just shared with you. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get referrals. Because let's face it, I don't want to keep having to go to networking events to get clients. That gets costly. That gets time consuming. Most of those events are in the evening hours. Like, I don't want that. I want them to refer me to people, their family, their friends. I want them to give me a big old list of 10, 15 names and numbers that they know. Now, I don't, if I'm getting 100 referrals a month, guess what I don't need to do? I don't need to keep going to those networking events. I don't. And when I first got started, no lie, when I first got started, I go to three networking events a week. It was Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Monday, it was like a, an appointment on my calendar. Sometimes I went twice in one day to two different events, a, a breakfast at 7.30 and a, a, a luncheon at 12. And if there was a happy hour at five o'clock with, with a little $5 coupon that got you two glasses of the most blandest house wine on the planet you know <laughs> what, uh, what, what is it a barefoot <laughs> you know the the wine in a box i'm i'm networking i'm networking and i'm networking and i'm networking and i'm networking i'm going to i'm going to art festivals i'm going to you know i'm going to anything especially during the daytime music festivals art festivals there's businesses left and right your gym sometimes allow you, they have like business expos. They allow you to set up a booth. Do it. Do it. But I became the mayor of my community. I became a social stinking butterfly everywhere. If you ask Sandra right now, there's very few places that I can't go to in the, in the Southwest Florida market where I'm not going to run into two or three people. And when I do, when I do, it's always me pumping them up. No lie. I'm always, yo, bro, what's going on, man? How you doing? How's business? I bet you're killing it, ain't you? You're killing it right now, bro. Hey, listen, Sandra, this is John. He runs one of the best plumbing businesses on the planet. You know, the only thing I'm crossing my fingers to, I don't run into another plumber friend of mine. <laughs> I'm just crossing my fingers. I don't run into another plumber right next to this guy because I got to pump him up too. I need to be liked. Point blank, period. Any questions?
Hey, what's up? You bringing everybody in? Is everybody back? Yes, I believe everyone is back besides Angel and Sheila. I don't know if you've seen them. All right, the breakout room. Let me see here. All breakout rooms will close in 56 seconds. I already closed it, so they'll be coming in here Perfect. momentarily. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense, guys? As these guys start coming back in, do you guys have any questions? You really want to kill it in this business? And you want to do it the old school way? You want to do it without the, without the leads? Three networking events a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then you know what I tried to do? I tried to do three lunches twice a day, twice a week. So if I'm in a networking event on a Monday, I'm doing a lunch at 11 o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, one o'clock in the afternoon, 11, 12, one, one hour back to back at the same place. Now it's a lunch with them. It doesn't mean I'm eating. If I eat some of me like a little salad or maybe a steam, you can't have a, a lunch meeting where both of y'all are scarfing down a big ass plate. Like there's no business. There's no business. There's a, like, no, that's not what you're there for. I, I, that's what I looked at. Like, I'm not there for that. I'm not about to buy the, the, the $40 plate. No, I'm going to order a soup so I can finish it quick and have my convo because that $40 plate is going to happen when I close this deal. And I take my girl out to go eat instead of this, this random, this person I just met, you know, but it was at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, one o'clock, same location. Boom. And then again, the same thing on Thursday and it, you know, a soup, a salad, you know, sometimes I just, I'm not even gonna lie. Sometimes I'm like, listen, I tell him at one o'clock, I'm like, I go, listen, I'll be honest with you. I wanted to take you out to lunch because I know you probably had an eating, but I actually had, I had, I had lunch at 1130 a little bit ago, but I'm okay. It takes, I'm out of the office. I'm good. My treat. Let's go. That's how I began. Networking event, networking event, networking event, art festival, music festival, this festival, this kids expo, this, this. I was just looking around left and right. And now it's easier. Now I got to just do what? Event break. What's popping in your community? I didn't have that before. It was all like Facebook wasn't what it was back then. I couldn't go on and be like, yo, what's happening in Naples? Like, I can't do that. It was all like, let me look online in the Naples Daily News and see what's popping. Let me ask around the community. Let me see what's happening. Let me, let me search on Google and I might find three things. That's what it was. But I always made sure I was going to events, 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 because there's something I knew. If I wasn't seeing somebody new and giving a chance to sell who I was, I wasn't giving mm -hmm. myself, my business, an opportunity to promote what I sold. And what am I now? I'm unemployed. Every minute of the day, you're unemployed that you're not just talking to somebody about your product. Every single stinking minute of the day, you're unemployed if you're not talking about your product. And there's one thing I didn't want to be as an entrepreneur is unemployed. I didn't want to be unemployed. So I was always meeting people. I was always talking to people. I was always going to events. I was always shaking hands. I was always promoting other people's businesses. And you know what ends up happening? The universe, as some of you guys like to put it, I like to say God decided to pay me back. He just decided to pay me back. He said, you paid your dues. I got you. I got you. I got you. That's, that's what always happened. It's always happened. And then little by little, 100 referrals a month became so easy. It got to 150 a month because I mean, it was just coming left and right, left and right, because <laughs> I built enough rapport with the community. Now, if I'm a new agent in today's world, today's world, Okay, as I finish off here, if I'm a new agent in today's world, I'm doing the same thing that I just talked about, but I'm also, you ready? I'm also buying a batch of leads because the leads let me turn business now. The networking lets me turn business later. And little by little, you start to realize I'm doing more sales on leads and less on networking, but little by little, it's like, man, I'm getting so busy in my networking. I'm getting so much business from networking, networking that all of a sudden I don't got to buy leads anymore. I'm busy enough as it is. You know, I'll close it with this. My payroll guy lives in Cape Coral. I live in Naples, right? Miner knows that drive. It's about an hour and 15 minutes. It's a distance. I remember my payroll guy when he was working for ADP. I met him at a networking event, a Hispanic chamber event, right? And he ended up one day breaking out and opening up his own business. This was maybe four years ago, opens up his own payroll company. So what happens when I open up TKO? You know what I do? I'm going to support small businesses. He handles the payroll for TKO. He handles all the payroll for TKO. It was kind of funny because he, dro he dropped all the 1099s that went out in the mail. 
which by the way, some of you guys, I was supposed to give it to you face to face, like in hand. And I, and I didn't, I apologize. We got to get those your way. I'll scan them and email them to you. It's like a handful of y'all. Cause I was going to see you Saturday. Um, you know what he did? He drove from Cape Coral all the way to my house, not my office, my house to drop off those 1099s. And for like 20 minutes, we just chopped it up. And we're talking about back in the day, how it was. Tony, you remember when you were an insurance agent at Northwestern and you were, you know, still trying to understand the industry and I was working at ADP and da 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 <laughs> Yeah, bro. Those relationships. He's fed me so much referral, so much business. And now look what I'm doing. I'm feeding him back. Relationships. Everything's, you know, what's crazy is Sandra and her son are constantly like, if they need to find somebody, they just call me. Do you know somebody that does that, that, that? I know somebody who does it. I promise you I do. That all came from years of just networking and building relationships with people and understanding what their business was and promoting their businesses wherever it is that I could. Let me ask all the new associates who just came back right now. How was Yasmin's training? I love the feedback. What do we got? It was really good. She explained everything very well. Nice. Anybody else? She's amazing, Tabitha says. Mm -hmm. I love that. Anybody else? Yasmin, you're a beast. A yeah, she was. She she was uh, she was awesome. Um, she she put put it on my mind though. I need to get me up my posse for myself. Ah, you facts. Once you finish that yeah. contracting, you and I are gonna sit down. We'll talk about that. I'll make sure you're covered. Okay. Okay. okay awesome. 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 She made, she made you want to listen to her. That's right. She does do that. She does a great job explaining everything perfectly. Just so you guys know, she's in the Illinois market. She has no problem working virtual either. Okay. She's a beast in the closing table. She's one of my top 10 personal writing agents last year. And I promise you, she didn't even do it part-time. She probably did it half, half of part-time. And we're hoping that this year she gives us more because she just has so much natural talent pouring out of her. It's ridiculous. I'm so glad when I asked her to do this role that she accepted it. Isn't she a ball of energy? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good, good stuff. For those of you that missed my section of training, for those of you that missed it, this is recorded. We talked about objection handling, objection handling, how to handle objections and prep yourself for that. But we also talked about how to engage the community and build a business that feeds you referrals left and right. We talked to we talked a great deal about that. I think it's worth you guys investing some time tomorrow and just, just catching, the, catching the YouTube video of that. If nobody else has anything else they want to say, any other questions, I'm going to let you guys go. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And I will 100% look forward to seeing you guys on the leaders board. Look forward to seeing some contracting come through from some of the newer agents. Shout out to Kim, if I'm not mistaken. Kim, you just passed your license as well too. Am I correct with that, Kim? If you're on here right now. Not sure if she Yeah, I think that was her name that they put on there to pass today. Nice. Let me get your feedback. Give me your feedback on the Voxer. Top two biggest takeaways that you guys learned, okay? Have a good one, guys. I'll stay on for a couple minutes for any more questions.